Okay, welcome to another Foundry tutorial. This one's the DM guide for basically prepping an adventure and sorting out a dungeon for yourself. This one's going to be longer than the prior two videos, because there's a lot more to cover. As per usual though, these tutorial series is being made in partnership with the LFG Europe. Um, great community in European time zones to find your next uh, tabletop game. Moving on though, we're going to jump straight into where we left off, where we had just got our player connected, we had created our landing page. To start off, we're going to add our first dungeon. I'm going to go over to the maps directory in top right, create a scene, and name it. The name, the scene name, doesn't matter because we're going to hide it with something else. Next up we have our accessibility. We can toggle, do we want all players to navigate to the scene at any point they want, or do we want the GM to call the navigation to it? We can also say, uh, check this box. If it's checked, it appears up in the top left and in the purple box. If it's not checked, it doesn't show up there. Next up is the navigation name. This is the name the player see in-game. For the sake of this, we're going to call it the uh, cellar, since it is the red band's hideout. Next up we have our image. We're going to go to... Find our image, which is in D&D Assets, Lost Mind Stuff, Dungeons, Red Band Hideout. Next up we have uh, Padding. Padding is the space outside of the map that the game is going to utilise. This is an enclosed dungeon, so we don't need it. Background colour depicts the background colour skirting around outside the image. Next up we have our grid settings. We can set a hexag uh, hexagonal if we need to, but for this it's just a square. And I know the size is 150 pixels, and it needs an offset of negative 9. And that's going to perfectly create the grid for this map. Next up we have our vision and lighting. I am going to keep token vision on. This means our player tokens are going to utilize line of sight mechanics. There is not a traditional fog of war and foundry without modifications, but we'll cover that in a later video. Global illumination is what you would expect. It lights up the whole scene, making sure that everything is visible and in bright light. For the sake of this, since it's a dungeon, we're not going to use it. Fog exploration, we're going to disable that, but it basically means that a player can see areas they've already explored. Darkness level, we don't need a touch because there's a in-map tool we're going to use for that instead. Global Lumen Professional, we don't need to worry about that. Next up is Ambience and Atmosphere. You don't want to touch any of this, specifically if your players have lower end systems. If that out of the way... I save it in, jump over here, you see the cell has popped up on the top left, I can right click it and then activate it. Activating it drags your players to it, to if we just want to navigate it to ourselves, we as DMs just left click the maps. So I can activate the landing page again and then left click on seller and I'll get there instead. Since we know everything's set up, we do need to set up the starting position of the camera. I maneuver the camera to where I want it to initially view. I want it to see the first room. Right click it and go to configure. We can also toggle these same options by going over to the maps directory and right clicking it. We get a few more options on this side though. With that out of the way, we go down to our... Right down at the bottom, we see we have initial view position. Once our camera's in the default place, we're going to tap on this uh, crop icon and that means the camera is going to be on this position when the scene is activated. However, it does not, just because it's what you see on your screen isn't what the players are going to see. Everyone's computer resolution seems to be different, so make sure it's got a wide enough area for margin of error. So if I jump back to the landing page, activate seller, I view this screen. Even if I move the camera and then reactivate seller, oh no it doesn't work, okay. but. First time loading in, this is always going to be the screen they see. Next up, we're going to go through our monsters. So we go to our actors directory. We can create our own monsters by clicking the create actor button. We can name it. And we can apply all the things here. We can apply its attributes, its skills, its proficiencies by clicking the box. Its resources, any details that it has, its inventory features, so on and so forth. We can also click this and assign it an image. For the sake of this tutorial, we don't need to do anything about that. Right click it, delete it. Instead what we're going to do, we're going to use compendium assets, mainly from the standard rule set. Go over to the right, just before our settings icon, we see we have a compendiums pack. 
We click that and we see all these SRD icons. Clicking on one of them, I know that I need a bandit. So I'm going to right click, uh, search bandit, import entry. And then we see it pops up over here into our actors directory. I'm going to close the sheet out because I also want something else. I want a skeleton. Does the same thing, gives me the character sheet, pops up on the right. And then I want a... I don't have them. Let's get a mage instead. It doesn't have a token. But we can add one when we go... To... Out of this map. Icon... Nope, not on there. Simple tokens. And I'm going to give it... That one. Just for the ease of use. There we go, and it's all set in place. Now once we've got these, I'm going to create a folder. Call it monsters, and I can drag these guys into this folder to make everything easy. I'm also going to go ahead, create a folder for players, and I'm going to import a starter hero. I'm going to import this one, so with it open, import it in, it pops into the actress directory. I now have this Dragonborn Cleric ready to go. Back on to our main dungeon. We need to populate it now. I know that I can just click on the monsters in the actors tab, drag them in, place them on the scene. I can do this multiple times. They're not linked, so I can say this guy takes 8 damage and none of the others are going to be affected. Once they're in place, I can click and drag and move the wrap. They do get animated as they move. I can control and scroll wheel to rotate them. And then if I right click on them, I get their options. What we have here is this is their altitude. It doesn't do anything mechanically, but it does display a icon to say how high above the ground they are. This is great for flying enemies. With that done, uh, next up I have my token settings where I can configure it. This configures it individually, not for the mass characters type in. So I can say it's character name, when its name is displayed on the token, the sheet it represents. If, it, if it's linked that actor data, that means a major NPC or a player character. That means it carries over for token to, to token. Its token disposition, is it friendly, neutral, or hostile? Next up, I have its image data. I can set the size of it, the image itself, its scale, any tint, position, is where it is on the map essentially. It's vision for NPCs, we generally don't have to worry about this, but it is nice to give your uh, monsters vision if you want to simulate that. Resources as well, for the sake of this, we have the green bar and this box, which indicates our monster's HP. Next up we have this icon, this is the targeted icon. It doesn't do much without modules, but it's useful to have. If you get your players to click this, you as a DM will get a little dot indicating who's targeting who. Next up we have toggle visibility. This turns the uh, character token invisible to players so they can't see it. Finally we have status effects. I can click on as many as I want on the right hand side. I can then also left click to get rid of them. I can right click them to apply a major status effect which covers the entire token and right click it to turn it off. Finally, we have the combat state. If we click this, get rid of that menu, you see it highlights in orange. If I then go over to the combat encounter, you see that this bandit's now in the combat encounter. If I select all of them, they all go in. I'll cover the counter encounter in a later tutorial video. With them placed, let's get some walls in. We're only going to cover the three main walls. That's the basic wall, which stops movement and light. The door wall, which can be opened by players. And the secret door, which we'll go into more detail later. For walls, we just left click and drag on the map. Make sure it's got the snap to grid, which is this purple button. Drag across and it snaps to grid. If I want to do it multiple times, I can click control and drag as well. And it just keeps going in a chain. Release control to end a wall. As I go through. I'm basically walling this entire area. I'm making sure I leave gaps where there's going to be doors. And so I drag the player in now as well. We will see that she has dark vision. So if I right click it. 
make sure I set her dark vision to the right range by going to her uh, avatar token settings. Go to vision. I know she has 60 foot of dark vision. She's a dragonborn. Update the token and then it updates. Notice how the walls block line of sight. And if I use the arrow keys, I cannot go through these walls. The next kind of wall we have is the door, which is this icon here. We drag them on. And we're going to leave this one here because that's a secret door. What happens then is we get these little icons here. We as DMs can left click it to open and close it or right click it to lock it. Players also get to see this door icon and they can open it when they're within five foot of it. I believe you can narrow down the settings in, uh, in the actual core settings area. See how the doors block line of sight, but when they're opened, we can see through them. Next up, we have our secret doors. Secret doors work exactly the same as normal doors, only the players can't see them. So this relies on the DM opening them up. So if I go here, I can't see through it, open it up, now they can. Secret doors can also be locked, but since it's a DM side of thing, I don't see the point in that. And that's everything done for this tutorial. I hope it was useful for you guys. Wait, no, it's not. I have missed something, actually, as I go through my notes. With us being a DM site and it being a digital tabletop, we can place our notes directly onto the screen. As I go to DD and Beyond, I can see that they have the red band hideout. If I go down to Seller 1, I could copy all these notes in, place them back over here into my... Go back to Foundry. Go into my journal pages. You see I've already done it. Double click. I've copied them in. Kept it. If I copy it in, it keeps the hyperlinks in so I can go to them at any time. And then if I click and drag this on here, I get a little book. If I double click it, I can get this note open. And if I want to just keep this note open, we close it somewhere. I double tip the name of it and it minimizes like in roll 20. And my players can't see this note either, so it's very useful for me. Next up, after we've got our walls and our notes, let's go through some lighting. You'll see that uh, it's not got glue illumination on, so although the map is light, the Dragonborn is having to use uh, dark vision. If we go here, we can transition to darkness. If I click that, you'll see the map gradually gets darker. I can also go back to daylight if I need to, but for the sake of this bit, I don't need to. There's also reset fog of war and clear all lights. We don't need any of that. Let's place a candle on this barrel here. If I drag out this candle, make sure, and then to make it not snap to grid, shift click, and now I double click on it. I see these settings, I like to round out my values, so that would become 20, and that's gonna become nine. We also get to change the light color for the sake of this, we don't need to. Next we have, we can set different animations. I'm gonna set it to torch, but I'm also going to slow it down a bit since it is a candle and lower the intensity of it. Now, if I go back to our character, they can't see it because... Why can't they see that light? Ah, I know why. If I right-click them, go to their token settings, go to their vision, you see they have dim vision. Let's turn that down to zero and see what happens. Now they can see it is uh, they don't have any dark vision other than the space around them. Which is very useful. And that's effectively the end of setting up your dungeon. I hope this tutorial was useful to people. And the next one, I'll go through the player side and cover a bit more in detail about combat. And I hope to see you there. Thank you very much.